This is going to be about those who put their confidence in the devil. In Psalm 118, 8 through 9, it says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. And then Ephesians 2 and verse 2, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So it says in Psalm 118.9, It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, and the devil is the prince of the power of the air. And you don't want to put your confidence in him. When you are willing to live for the flesh, the devil will give you confidence to act out those desires of the flesh. If you're saved, then the Lord will say, Don't do this. You know my word. You know how I feel about this. Don't do this. You have the Holy Spirit in you telling you, don't do it. But if you end up doing the act, then the devil will give you temporary confidence, temporary consolation, comfort, enjoyment, warmness, happiness, and pleasure until the act or until the event is over. Now, this could be a small pet sin that lasts but for a moment. Or it could be an event that happens over the years. It could be an entire lifestyle. The devil will, can give you confidence in that, in that so that you'll continue to do it. For example, you got these serial killers like the Golden State Killer. He killed and raped and robbed for years in the 70s and 80s. He took great pleasure and comfort in that. He got caught back in like 2017. But where was the devil to help him when he got caught? Where was the devil to bail him out? He had confidence in the devil throughout his life, whether he knew it or not, but it didn't pay off. The pleasures of sin are over, and now he must face judgment and consequences for his life. You're all bold and in that sin and prideful about it, and then you get caught, and that unclean spirit leaves you, and then you're just left there to face it yourself. The same thing happened for Ted Bundy, BTK, the Green River Killer. You see the life of celebrities. They live it up for years and live in pleasure and comfort, and the devil gets done with them, and look at them now, shriveled up and depressed. They put all their confidence in the devil, and then he leaves or takes some of the power off, and they're facing the consequences on their own. They don't have anything to put their confidence in. There are some things you experience when playtime is over. There are some things you will realize when you find out that the pleasures of sin only last for a season. There are some feelings you will have when you realize none of it was worth it. So I'm going to tell you what happens when you lose that confidence that the devil gives you to act out those sins, whether it be a temporary pet sin or a sin that you're doing for a, over the years. One of them is regret. For example, in Matthew 27, 3, it says, Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Notice that Judas didn't repent until he saw that he was condemned. He didn't feel bad about any of it until he shot himself in the foot when it was still in his mouth. It was all good when he was betraying Jesus Christ, when he got that 30 pieces of silver, when he was leading the soldiers and giving a Judas kiss to the Savior. But now he realizes it isn't working out for him. Now, Judas was a devil, but Satan entered into him later on. And sometime after he betrayed Jesus Christ, the devil must have left. And that's when he lost confidence. He had his confidence in a wicked prince. And he did a very wicked thing. Have you ever lost your temper and let out all your anger and frustration on somebody that was next to you? It felt good when you were letting out 15 years of pent-up anger. But what about after? You were overcome with regret. Now, I'm speaking hoping you understand that people are different. There are psychopaths and narcissists that have no guilt or regret about anything they do. But the average lost man will have regret, even if it is regret because he was caught. But the saved man 
has much more regret than anyone. He knows he sinned against God himself. And the feeling you have, you will have... You'll have this feeling after you place confidence in the devil for a temporary moment. And this feeling you have is regret. Intense regret. And it will grind on your heart. And that is a good thing if that's happening. Because it's good that you feel that way. Because it keeps you from doing it over and over and over and over again. When you need to be concerned is when you don't have that grinding at the heart. That over being overcome with regret. You want that after you sin. In Matthew 27, 4 and 5, it says, Saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. This is what Judas said. And they said, What is that to us? See that to that. He cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Judas didn't even want the 30 pieces of silver when it was all said and done. When, you are, when it's all said and done... When you're all said and done in your sin, you think to yourself, was it even worth it? Why did I do that? When a man commits adultery, for example, on his wife, he has temporary pleasure. If he has any amount of goodness in him at all, when it's all over, he will be in regret and agony and say, was it even worth it cheating on my wife for a little time of pleasure? The pleasure is over, but his wife is at home waiting on him. He could have got the same pleasure from his wife, but the devil says that's boring. The devil says that's too vanilla vanilla for you, as they're saying today. You see, they're saying, you know, it's too vanilla and plain for a man and one man and one woman to be together. And he gives you the push and drive to go through with fulfilling the desires of the flesh. It feels good and gratifying in the moment. And then after it's over, you'll say, what have I done? My wife is at home. My kids are at home. And the realization comes over you that you're in bed with a woman that isn't your wife. And that confidence that you had, it left. The devil gave you a temporary confidence so that you would go through smoothly with the act. That could ruin the rest of your life. Or, for example, someone who kills someone in a rage. When you get caught and the cops come and put the handcuffs on you, the devil leaves you, you lose confidence in the prince of the power of the air, and you realize you should have had your confidence in the prince of peace, and then it wouldn't have happened. You feel regret. And the next thing you also feel is shame. In Nahum 3, 5, it says, Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame. So the Lord will allow you to continue in sin with the devil, but shame day is coming. And this is where you get the saying, caught with your pants down. You may be in some type of sin right now, but if you keep on, you will eventually be caught with your pants down. In Zephaniah 3, 5, it says, The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not. But the unjust knoweth no shame. They may not know any shame right now, but there is coming a day when they will bow down in shame to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. In Revelation 3.18, it says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Revelation 16.15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. You may go through with fulfilling the desire of your flesh, fulfilling whatever your flesh wants, but when it is done, you will look back in shame. At least I hope you do. Because Romans 6.21 says, What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? You ought to be ashamed of those things that you used to love. If you have shame for what you've done, and that shows your conscience isn't seared, if you're a saved child of God and you get off into sin and are ashamed of yourself and want to come back to God, the devil will say, this is what he'll say, he'll say, you can't get right with God now. You have to wait until you have been right for a while or until you've been away from that sin for a while and then God will want to talk to you again. That's not how it works. That's not true. God wants to talk to you right now. He wants you to come to him right now and get back in fellowship right now. You shouldn't wait. Prayer is a killer for unrepentant and unconfessed sin. The more you're in a habit of praying, the less you will spend time in sin. 
And if you don't go ahead and start praying and get back in fellowship now, you're probably going to just end up doing that sin again. Have you ever got really upset at work or hurt yourself on the job and lost your temper in front of a lost person and the devil would get in you and make you want to throw stuff and scream and holler, but then when it's all said and done, you feel that shame if you went through with it. Has anyone ever talked you into watching a movie you weren't supposed to watch that had bad, wicked stuff in it, and then when the movie was over, you had this dirty, wicked, and defiled feeling, and you feel shame? You say to yourself, why did I watch that? You say, I feel dirty, I feel awful, and then you can't even sleep. And I mean, that's good if you feel that way after you've done something you were supposed to do. But then you start feeling like, well, I can't talk to God right now after I just did that. I got to wait a couple days. No, that's not how it works. Go ahead and talk to him now. There are people who have committed adultery and their spouse doesn't even know it. And they live with that shame for the rest of their life. The guilt eats them alive. Did you know there are people so overcome with guilt and shame for cheating on their spouse that they would rather their spouse be the one that cheated instead of themselves? Don't suffer shame for Satan. Suffer shame for the Savior. Just like in Acts 5.41, it says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. But what else does confidence in the devil bring? It brings a different hiding place. In Psalm 119, 114, it says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. God ought to be your hiding place. The Lord is supposed to be your hiding place. When things go bad, he should be the one you run to. But when you have confidence in the devil, you're running to your bottle of pills, your bottles of booze, your binge-worthy TV show, your Ben and Jerry's, your best friend who tells you everything is okay because they don't have any morals themselves. The devil will have you go everywhere except to the blessed old book. All things of the world become your confidence when you have confidence in the devil outside of God. When you go through with your sin and fulfill the desires of the flesh, whatever that desire may be, the devil tries to tell you that God is done with you and that you might as well just go hang yourself like Judas. You might as well just hang it up. You might as well just give it up, he'll say. So when trouble comes, you hide everywhere else but in the arms of Jesus. For example, you see wicked, mighty men and kings hiding themselves the moment they lost confidence in the devil. They don't have anywhere to go but in caves and under the bed. In Joshua ten sixteen, it says, But these five kings fled and hid themselves in the cave at Mechedah. And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave at Mechedah. See, these mighty kings, with all this power and glory, ended up hiding like a bunch of scared chickens. Consider Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, 7, and 8. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. So they hid themselves. After they sinned, they were ashamed. Their ne they saw that their nakedness was exposed, just like those verses we, we read earlier. They had confidence in the devil when they took the fruit and ate it. But then afterwards, they lost confidence. They heard God walking, the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid themselves. When you have your confidence in the devil, you got a different hiding place. Because you feel like you can't hide in God's arms. So you got to hide somewhere else. And you'll either hide behind some type of thing the devil gets you. Or you'll go hide. You'll be hiding from God somewhere. But they found another hiding place. They were hiding behind the trees. Did you see that? They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And in Hosea 4.13 it says, They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. When you got confidence in the devil and you're living for the flesh, you're, you're lurking in the shadows. 
you're hiding behind the trees because the shadow thereof is good. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. When you got confidence in the devil, you got a different hiding place. And when the devil leaves you, he pulls the rug out from under you and you don't have nowhere to hide. And you can't hide from God anyway. But I hope that you will quit whatever pet sin you've got going on. I hope you will stop whatever sinful lifestyle you got going on. If you're living in adultery with somebody, you need to stop it today. Any type of sin. You need to quit putting all this confidence in the devil. See, he's when he tempts you with the sin, he gives you confidence and says, no, oh, one more time, or uh, just a little bit won't hurt, or everybody's doing it. He'll say these little things that can give you that temporary push or confidence to go ahead and go through with the act. Then he pulls the rug out from under you. And then you don't you didn't have confidence in God and the devil's left you. So you don't have confidence in him. And you're just there with regret and shame and trying to find a place to hide. You're trying to get some drugs, get the alcohol. And then, and then you're just hiding from God. But you need to just go ahead, come to God now. Stay confessed up every day. If you mess up, then you mess up. You just confess it to God, try again. You mess up again, confess it to God, try again. Just never keep trying. 